Fancy Vintage. Uh, this is Teresa. Today we are making another 12 by 12 collage, uh, mixed media collage piece on watercolor paper. Um, and I picked watercolor paper because, well, I have this whole pad of it here and it's a very sturdy surface to do mixed media on. So that's what we're going with. Um, I'm using some Tim Holtz uh, what is it called? Comes in a big roll. Goodness. I'll have all the supplies listed below so y'all know exactly what I used. And if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a comment. Um, but anyway, this is some Tim Holtz collage paper. And I have just ripped up a big piece of it. It had text and some map and some numbers and some other bits and bobs on there. Um, and it's it's a little bit of a, a waxy feeling paper almost. Um, it feels a little different than, than your typical paper, but it takes paint and ink and um, pen really well. So um, I haven't used this in a while and I'm trying to use up the supplies that I have before I buy anything new. Um, you know, the, the makers are always putting out brand new things and oh my goodness, they're fantastic and I want to buy them all. But you know what? Uh, one, I can't, <laughs> don't have the money for that. And two, um, I have so many art supplies right now, it's kind of ridiculous. So uh, here I am trying to use up what I have. Um, I'm also incorporating some vintage um, road atlas uh, paper in here as well. I got the Road Atlas at a thrift store. It's from 1978. Um, it is not an accurate map anymore. It still says the Soviet Union and other things. So it's, yeah, it's not useful as a map. And I promise, um, you know, there, there are plenty of examples of old maps in the world in libraries and archives. And we're okay if, if I tear up this one book, I promise. Um, we're also using the Simplicity Pattern Envelope today. Um, I got a bunch of empty envelopes with various sewing patterns on them from my local Creative Reuse store a while back. And this was one of them. These two ladies here are so cute in their little, um, what do you call these? Jumper dresses, I guess? Um... Looks like they're from the late 60s, early 70s, maybe. And they're drawn in that traditional uh, fashion model style where they're way taller than a regular human. <laughs> um, I think I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that when you draw a fashion drawing, you add in one more head length than you do for a regular human drawing. I think a regular human drawing is eight heads. And a fashion head, a drawing is nine heads. Um, this is all strange trivia off the top of my head. So again, uh, take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to fussy cut these two girls out. And I really love their shoes. They're so cute. Um, I just thought this was a cheerful, happy uh, image. And I really wanted to just celebrate autumn uh, being here finally even though where I am currently it's still really dang hot and I'm very disappointed but you know what climate change is real y'all um anyway so I'm gonna use this Fiskars um oh my goodness I'm going completely blank on what this thing is um it's an exacto knife that's what this is <laughs> Um, by Fiskars, and it fits around your finger so you can control it with um, the top of your hand, which I really appreciate. Um, and so I'm able to cut out the spaces between their arms um, and, and that little space that was left between their legs, you know, just so the entire background will show through. Okay, so now that we've cut them out and we know mostly where they're going to go, I'm going to use some paint to add color to our, our piece here. And I am using um, Amsterdam acrylic. And this is uh, primary magenta. And it is beautiful. It is very pink. 
Um, I liked this color because it was a nice contrast to the green and yellow uh, in the image of the girls. And then I'm also going to pull out this Dina Wakely um, heavy body paint. Now, I forgot just how heavy body these Dina Wakely paints can be. Uh, and this green is called Fir, F-I-R, like a fir tree. And I realized, oh boy, I put too much on. So I tried to wipe some off. Then I try to use a little water, and then I'm like, you know what? We're just going to accept this. It's okay. So I had a bunch left, and I tore out an old book page, and I'm just putting the remainders of what I have left on that page so that I can use it in a future collage. Uh, waste not, want not. <laughs> and we're going to dry the paint. And once that's dry, I put the girls back just to see if everything is moving along nicely, and it is. So now I've got my big green box of bits and bobs, and I'm going through to see if there's any other little pieces of ephemera that I want to add. You know, numbers, um, die cuts, things like that. The green box has a little bit of everything in it, and frankly, you know, I could spend all day searching through it. So I just tried to pull out things that looked interesting. And I've got this, these multicolored bursts, um, and I was like, well, that looks fun. I also found the number three, uh, the number one, and then I found a little magazine clipping, but I decided that was not going to work at all. So the magazine clipping went back into the box. Okay, well, we're going to put all that aside, and I've got this stencil from the Crafter's Workshop. It's got a damask design, and I'm using more Dina Wakely paint because I want it to show up um, over this green paint here, and it, it kind of does. Um, which one was I using? Lemon. Uh, lemon, I think, is a little more transparent. But uh, it was on my desk, and I just figured, you know what? We'll just do two layers if we have to. And that seemed to work pretty well. I didn't need it to be perfect or really, really bright. So I just, you know, wanted to have a design down there in that, that bottom right, uh, left corner, rather, to just kind of give a little interest. I've got another Crafter's Workshop stencil here. This one's probably my favorite of all time, and it's just the dots. Now I've gone back with the green fur color, and I'm adding in a bunch of dots here. Um, and I kind of had a little bit of a, you know, a diamond point happening there at the top of the image, and I was kind of putting in these dots as one more way to kind of draw your eye up to the very top of the page. Um, and, and have that be kind of a, a peak. So, so yeah, I like the way this turned out. And the contrast between the green and the red is, is just lovely. And to me, this didn't read too Christmassy. Um, I mean, I guess maybe it could, but I think with the incorporation of the yellow and, um, you know, keeping it kind of fun, kind of got rid of that Christmas idea. I don't know. Let me know if you think I didn't really do that, but I feel like I did. I feel like this is a, a nice use of two contrasting colors. Um, you know, your red and your green, and yes, they are very prominent in Christmas decorations, but I also feel like, you know what, red and green were here long before any holidays were here, so <laughs> it's okay to use red and green together for non-Christmas things. I don't know. Call the Christmas police. Anyway, um, I'm going to glue down my ephemera, and then I'm going to glue down the ladies. Um, but before I do that, I want to add a little gesso, because I just want to soften some of this green. It's very intense. Uh, I know that the, the video kind of washes that out a little bit, but in real life, it was, it's, yeah, it's a lot. So I'm just going in and dabbing a little gesso here and there. I'm also trying to clean up uh, some little tiny marks that I made uh, over the stencil that I didn't want. Um, and just softening a, a little bit of the edges too, just to kind of feather out the edges there and give it a softer look. And it just looks nicer on the page because I want to keep that negative space that I've got going on in that top right corner. Um and just have my, my image be um, 
kind of a, a little, you know, right of the, the center line there and, and at the bottom of the page. Okay, so now I'm using my Uhu glue stick to go ahead and put some glue on the back of our focal point and trying to be careful. The glue stick is very sticky. Uh, and then gently, gently pressing down all the pieces because I don't want anything to tear or move. Um, and I think they look great. They look, you know, very dynamic with this kind of starburst design behind them. So I was pretty happy with that. Now I'm going to do a little mark making with a black Posca pen. Just wanted to have something over there. Um, also looking around my desk because I'm like, yeah, you know, this needs a little, a little more stuff. I thought about doing an outline around the two girls, but then I was like, nah. Um, that was me trying to use a white um, Stabilo All Pencil to cover up some more of those marks, but it wasn't really working. So I'm just, just let them go. I'm going to put something for the ladies to stand on here with a, a black Stabilo Pencil. And I'm activating it with water. Now they're not just floating in the air. If you hear any schnorfels in this video, Pinky is up here with me. She's in a little bit of an afternoon mood. <laughs> Say hi, Pinky. Hi, Pinky. Um, using a yellow Stabilo pencil. And now I'm using a Woody, Stabilo Woody. Um, finally, I ended up using a, a pink and a red to kind of cover up those little green marks. And then I activated those with water. And that finally seemed to work. Yeah, they were really bothering me, apparently. <laughs> so I'm using a very small brush. This is a number one brush um, to go in with some water to kind of blend the Stabilo Woody into the background. Um, and just kind of, you know, get rid of those little tiny green marks that y'all couldn't really see, I'm sure, but I could see them and they were making me crazy. So they're gone now. Um, so much for acceptance. <laughs> anyway, um, this, this piece is almost done. Yeah, we're done. Thanks so much for watching y'all. I really do appreciate you and I will see you next time.